Bible, please. Let's go to the book of Ezra once again tonight. Book of Ezra, we're in chapter number three. We're going to read verse eight through three, three, eleven. I hope there'll be a blessing uh, to you. Uh, Ezra chapter three, verses eight through eleven. Ezra three, verses eight through eleven. I'm just going to stay with this. I don't want to take and try to figure it out tonight. So, Ezra 3, verses 8 through 11. You found it? Say amen. amen. All right. There's some of you still looking for it. That's the pages that are stuck together. Remember that. The ones that are stuck together. Ezra chapter 3, verse 8. Now, the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem in the second month began Zerubbabel, the son of Shethiel, and uh, 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 Jeshua, the son of Josedach, uh, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all they that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem. And he appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel, and his sons and the sons of Judah together to set forward the workmen in the house of God. And the sons of Hinnadad with, when uh, with their sons and their brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets. And the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals to praise the Lord after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. And they sang together by course in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good for his mercy and do it forever toward Israel. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Tonight, I hope that you will get a hold of the great thought God has given for us. It's called The Building Begins. The building of that great work, that temple of God, is beginning. Of course, Nehemiah, they start building a wall. But here, they're working on this temple. Got to get the house of God up before you have anything to set boundaries and protections around. Amen? And so I hope to be a blessing to you tonight as we look at that thought, the building begins. Father, bless now. Help us encourage us. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And we just, again, are so thankful that we have this to get back to. And I hope it'll be a blessing to these, your people, as you've been a blessing to me. Thank you so much for, dear God, working in hearts. And I just pray right now tonight that, Lord, you do a little bit more work. Get us a little bit deeper in your work. Thank you so much again for your patience as we pray so often as you deal with us right where we are in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. Amen. I want to remind you, of course, of what we're doing here with the book of Ezra. We're not, of course, worried so much about a building as we are about people. More worried about people. And so remember, what God's trying to do for us is he's trying to bring revival. In other words, God says something was alive. Now it's maybe dying or dead. And I want to bring it back to life. Amen. That's what God wants to do. The second thing I want you to remind you of this is that what God wants to do is restore a relationship. You say, preacher, I don't need my relationship restored. Okay, good, good. That, that's all right. And, um, and if you really believe there's nothing you need to work on, then please let the rest of us get something done in our lives. Amen? The other thing I told you is that there's a rebuilding going on. There was a temple. It's been brought down in the rubbles. And now God says, let's get it built back up. And so we see those basic things that God's doing. He's not really just trying to get a build. Remember, every building project is God building us. God sometimes looked at building projects and he works on see where we are when it comes to our pride. In other words, there's some people that say they'll never get it done without me. No, let's not be that kind of, come on now. That church wouldn't be what it, what it is without me. If everybody in church was just like me, then what kind of church would this church be? Prideful. <laughs> So God is saying, I need you to understand something. That this is really working on us. We need to look at ourselves when it comes to building the building. We also need to look and see, are we willing to follow God's plans and programs? See, because understand something, that children of Israel had been in Egypt, and they had been building a whole lot of stuff for Pharaoh, but when they came out, God didn't ask them what he, that they thought about building the temple. It was built according to God's, come on now. And a lot of times what we do is we start saying, I know best. And God says, I didn't ask you your opinion. I know how to help build a family. Matter of fact, if the Lord don't build a house, then guess what? We labor in vain. 
And so we got we to gotta go and see what God says about building and what God wants for our lives. And so God says, I'm working on people. I'm working on pride. I'm working on plans. I'm working on programs. And watch this now. I'm working on participation. There's a lot of people who want something done, want something built around the house of God, but God says there's no participation. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. We're going to be getting to some of that. Come on now. I'm just trying to preach the word of God. I told my wife, I said, I said, sweetheart, I am so glad I'm not smart. She said, what do you mean? I said, I don't know how to go in and pick out something and preach it. So what I try to do is get a hold of a book or get a hold of a, of a certain topic. And when I say a topic, I don't want a topic every week. I want a topic that we're going to labor in. And you know what? Then I get to preach the whole counsel of God. And then you get to be mad with God, not with me. Come on, somebody. And so that's all I wanted to do. I'm taking just walking through this book of Ezra, and we're going to build a life, and I hope that's what we're trying to do. We're going to get back to where God wants us to be. We're going to remember what we had or, or get what God wants for our lives. Amen? And so that's where we're at tonight. And so I always want to remind you that. And I want to remind you before we get in, because we, we was out last week on this here, uh, book, and uh, I want to remind you where we were before we got here. We talked about, I want to see God move. I want to see God move. I want to see God do something in my life. And God kind of tried to help us with some stuff. And maybe you were here and maybe you weren't here, but I needed to give you some verses once again so you can see how God works. John, James chapter 4 and verse number 8. You want to see God move? God says, draw nigh to God, and then he'll draw nigh to you. So in other words, I make a move toward God, then God makes a move toward me. I want to see God move. God said, but I don't see anything out of your life. You say, well, preach, wait a minute now. I got saved and I couldn't do anything. God says, I know, but after salvation, I'm looking for you to start doing some things. Amen. You, and by the way, when it comes to salvation, you got to take and say, God, I need to be saved before God will save you. And so we need to understand there's always a move on our part, a prerequisite, so that God can do what he promised us. Get this now. We've got the prerequisite, and God's made the promises to us. And so he says, draw nigh unto, unto God, and he'll draw nigh to you. But wait a minute. We didn't stop right there. We said, you got to finish the rest of the verse. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Purify your hearts, ye double-minded. So God says, let's work on our hands, our hearts, and our heads. If we're going to take and get, oh, get God to move in our lives. And so what's in your, what's in your hands? What, what is, are we doing with our hands that need to be dealt with? What is it that's going on in our heart that needs to be purified? And what is it that we've got in our heads where nobody knows, but God says, I know everything. How about this here verse right now? Remember this one, Second Chronicles, and we'll keep on moving, 714. If, remember that word, if. My people, which are called by my name, do a humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Next word is then. So God says, if you, then I'll. But wait a minute, we got to do our part. Because here's what some of us will do. Uh, humble ourselves and pray. God, humble myself and pray. Okay, I can do that. But then God, seek your face. That's going to take some time. And God says, I know, put some in. Yeah. And then turn from your wicked ways. See, we spend time with God, and I'm going to preach a message about that, why you and I should spend time with God. We spend time with God so we can find out from God what is it in our lives we need to do to get right with God. We turn from God, then God said, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. How many of you say, I need God to do that for me? And God says, well, then I need you to do your part for me. You do your part, I'll do my part. I want to see God move, and God says, no problem. Soon as you start moving. Hey, man. I, I, want, I want mom to take me to, uh, uh, to, to the store. And mom said, I want you to clean your room. Okay, I better leave that one alone too. All right then. I want, I want, a, I want a promotion from the boss. Yeah, you, yeah, I know. We don't like to be bothered. We want to get on the kid. I want a promotion. And the boss said, I need to see some effort and some energy. I need to see some work get done. Give me a raise. <laughs> no, you don't need a raise. You need to be fired. Come on, I'll leave that one alone. But we always want something. And God is saying, and I want something from you. So I, I, want, I want to see God move. And God says, I'm going to move as soon as you move. So now here we are tonight with the, get this now, with the building beginning. But wait a minute before we move on here. Remember some of the stuff I told you that we've got to do? If we really want to see God do, we've got to be consistent and coming to the house of God. 
See, a lot of times we don't we, we want God to move and God says, you know what? The thing you need to move or the area you need to move in, the preacher preached about it last week. Well, I didn't hear it. You can't when you don't show up. Okay, I believe that one alone too. And then not only do we need to come to the house of God, we need to learn to call on God for help. I want to see God move. God said, what a friend we have in Jesus. But guess what we don't do? We don't bring all of our burdens to him and leave them there like the Bible says. God is saying, man, I can help you with that. Cast your cares upon me because I care for you. So we need to come to the house of God. We need to learn to call on God for help. And then we need to continue to give God the honor and the glory and the praise. Say, preacher, what do you mean? Stop, let's stop taking credit ourselves. I'm nobody without God. Thank God for him being in my life. Somebody say amen. So I want to, I want to get some work done here. Now watch this now. I got to make a move. God says, you want to see me move? Then you got to make a move. Let me give you a still introduction. You still with me now? Stay with me now. So write these things down somewhere on your, li on your outline. You want to you you get the work started now? I want to see God move? Hear what God says. Most of us will never get anything built. Why? Because we're not willing to put in the time. Remember, this is about a life. If I want God to do something in my life, God says you got to put in some time. Why don't we spend time with God so God can show us where we need to take, how we need to, and, and when we need to do some building, some adding to and taking out. Hey, Amen. And God said, that's what's missing today. Uh, again, we don't want to put in the time. The time. And then watch this now. We need to say, God, I'm going to give you my treasures. No, wait a minute. I know first thing you're talking about money. We're going to build. I thought you said it wasn't about a building project. I need you to understand something here. When it comes to our time, sometimes God says, I want some of that precious time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, yeah. you want to give me the leftovers. God said, give me some of that precious stuff. Give me some of that stuff that you would use to do other things in your life. Okay, I better get off of that one, too. God said, how about some time and how about some treasure? And then watch this now. How about some toil, some travail? Watch this, Maya. This, this will get you, Maya. Here's what God says. I need you to put in the work. I need you to put it in. By the way, young people, let me help you. Are you still with me? Work, W-O-R-K, is not an FM radio station. Some of you will get that. You say, I don't listen to FM. Well, I need you to understand something. It ain't on Sirius. It ain't on satellite. Come on, somebody. God says, something's missing today. And what is that? We don't, we're not willing to put in the work, the effort, the toil, the travail. We're, listen, to me. we want God to do some stuff. And God says, but you don't want to do anything. We just want it to happen. God, I want to, want to be a millionaire. God says, okay, how about this here? Get a job. How about save some money? And how about stop spending it on frivolous? No, God, I, want, I, I just want the stuff. And God says, okay, go get the stuff. And guess what? You ain't going to be what you think you want to be or what you could be. If anything's going to ever get done in our lives, we got to decide this here. I'm going to put in the work. Amen. Amen. And remember, it's the time. And many people, listen to me now. Some people want to advance in the job, and they'll take and put in some overtime. Yeah. I'll, I'll give it some overtime. Why? I want the money. Why? I want the promotion. Why? Because there's some things I, I, want, to, I want to get my family that if I don't do some overtime, we can't afford it. And God said, but look at how you do me. No extras. All right, I better keep on going here. Hey, I'm, I'm enjoying this study in the book of Ezra because you want to know something? God's been working on my heart and life. Matter of fact, I can't wait to get the next week. We, preacher, just get this one over with, please. <laughs> I'm serious. I can't wait to get the next week because God is saying some of us don't understand. Listen to me now. How important to God the little things in our lives are. Okay, that's next week. I'll get off of that one. So write this down on your outline. Number one, if you would please, the labor in the work of God. If, if, if the building's going to begin, there's got to be the labor and the work of God. And remember, I'm talking about building 
our lives, not just on a building. We'll notice two things in verse number eight and nine. If you would please, in verse number eight, the Bible says at the end of it, they set forward the work of the house of the Lord. They set forward the work of the house of the Lord. Next thing I want you to notice is in verse number nine. The Bible says, that was verse eight. The Bible says in verse number nine, right in the middle of it, to set forward the workmen in the house of God. So first of all, they set forward the work, and then they said, we gotta, if we're going to get the work done, we've got to have the workmen. Yeah. And this is what he said. They're going to put up the work, and we're going to find out the foundation is laid, but they said inside of the house of God. They've set forward the workmen in the house of God. Because on the first verse, we see Zerubbabel and Shethel and Jeshua and all of those, those who brothers who were doing the work of the house of the Lord. But in verse 9, we see Jeshua saying, here are the people. These are my sons. These are the ones that God has given me to do the work in the house of the Lord. We got to work on, but we got to do some work in. You know what God is saying? Here's our problem. When it comes to the labor, I need you to realize something here. I need there to be an external work as well as an eternal or internal work being done. See, a lot of us get the external right. We look good. We look sharp. We know how to say it. We know, we know how to present ourselves. And God said, but the inside stinks. Preach, I don't like this message. Well, that's okay. I'm, I told you, that's what I like, just going verse by verse. Because <laughs> then, then you can't blame me. God is saying today there is an external work and there's an internal work that is an eternal work. And guess, and guess what? God is saying so many people are not willing to do the work on the temple as well as the work in the temple. And know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you and you've been bought with the price and you're not your own. Therefore, we glorify God in our body and our spirit which are God's. So if I'm going to do a work, I'm doing a work because this is God's building. This ain't my building. The labor is for what God wants done, not for what I want. Come on, help me, somebody. Here's what God is saying. Listen, are you still with me now? We want God to do it, and God says, I need you to get involved in getting it done. I need you to invest in it, and I need you to have the right intent of getting this house built for God. Amen. What's our problem today? We forgot. This is not my life. This is his life. So let me ask you some questions. Are you still with me? Let me ask you some things about your labor. What are you focused on? About your labor, what are you really focused on? Let me just put it this way. Have you taken a good look at your heart? See what it's focused on? I, I know God has me doing Come on, somebody. What, what is our heart focused on in life? I want to do something for God. God says, but guess what? You'll never get things done for me if your heart is not focused on me. And then watch this now. Once we get focused, here's what God has said. You got to get fixed in your heart. You can't be wishy-washy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Amen. When they said, let's get some things done, we got the work going on, and we got the work doing in, and here's what God has said. There's got to be focus, and we've got to be fixed. And watch this now. We got to say, dear God, do whatever you got to do to fasten me to the work. Now here's the problem some of us have. Do you understand in order to get this work done, Brother Mike, they had to leave where they were at and go to. Yeah. You can't be fasting on God's work when you're trying to do it in another country. <laughs> Probably wish I hadn't really put this stuff together, but thank you, God, for helping us here today. Because then you can blame me, but you got to say, God, what are you trying to tell me? Here's what God is saying. Most of us don't like the labor. Because when you start, this is me, I'm not talking about just the physical, I'm talking about the spiritual labor. Because once you have to, once you start laboring, here's what starts happening. You start saying, I got to pay more attention to detail. I, I don't, I, I was a building inspector, and when I say building inspector, I really didn't know what I was doing. But I knew one thing here, Brother Miguel. I got the specs, I got the plans, and I would take them out there and say, that's not according to specs or plans. Yeah, yeah. Or that one will pass. Can I ask you a question? Have you really taken the word of God and say, well, that's not according to specs and plans, or this will pass? 
No, most of us just say, well, I want to build it this way. And, and guess what? There's some that build their house on a rock and it stand, and there's some that build it on the sand, and before you know it, plop, comes falling down. Most of us are like Humpty Dumpty. Once we fall off the wall, you can't put us back together again. You know what God says? Let's fix that. Well, how am I going to do it, God? God says, be willing to labor in spiritual things. The, the external, I want it worked on, but guess what? Don't just be some, a show. Let's get some stuff done inside here. To where we can say, you know what, God? Search me. You see something shouldn't be? Show it to me. Wow. Okay, I better move on here. So once we labor in the work, how about this here? Let's learn the living. If we're going to build the building again, there must be the living by the word of God. Kind of hit a little bit, but let's just look at this thing. Are you still okay? Say amen. Look at verse 10. Ezra 3 verse 10. Man, I'm glad that God gave this to us. The building begins. <laughs> Say, preacher, man, it don't look like anything up yet. That's only because of the fact we're not putting in the labor. And then the living is right. Verse 10. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with symbols to praise the Lord. Watch it now. After the ordinance of David, king of Israel. God put that in there on purpose. Matter of fact, many of you remember when David brought the ark back and how he just praised God over it. You know what they just said here? We're doing it according to that. David made, put, he put, he put singers in the temple. We're doing it according to that. He had Asap leading the choir. We're doing it according to that. Hey amen. Now watch this here. God uses this stuff. Are you still with me? Say amen. Look what he says. Asaph with symbols to praise the Lord. According to all of that, according to the sons of him. Now remember something here. These people have been gone off the scene a little bit, but their genealogy has been important. And what happens now is we got the David and we got Asaph. We got the Levi. And, and guess what they're doing? They say, we're not making this up and doing it our way. We're living by the word of God. Wow. So write, write this. Are you still with me? So, so a couple of things is why? Why are we doing it this way? And, and, and why are we having this worship service? And the second one is the way we're having this worship service. Why are we having it? And, and what's the way we're having it? We're doing it. Get this now. According to the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Ordinance. Write this down. Now living by the word of God. You still with me? Ordinance means this here. I'm doing it based upon the authority in my life. So who has the authority? Who's in charge? Me, myself, and I. Amen. Most of us won't admit it. Matter of fact, I told my wife, I said, you know, one of the saddest things that, that I have to really, and I'm just being honest with you, experience as a pastor, when I say something from the book, and you don't want to take it in your life. Not, not my preference, but God's precepts. That's one of the saddest things that, that, I, that I have to deal with when it comes to being a pastor. Now, again, I want you to understand something. God's working on me, too, but I know who my authority is. Now, wait this now, because here's what you'll say. I know who my authority is. Well, ordinance, like this now, it said they did it after the order. That means according to the authority. So just because you know who the authority is, are we doing it according? Boy, it's quiet on me, but that's okay. God is saying, listen to me now. I need to let the scriptures, I need to let the word of God be my guide. I need to let the scriptures, I need to let the word of God uh, govern my life. Whew. You say, preacher, I'm doing that. God says, wait a minute now. You can't be doing that if you're delaying in doing that. See, because while we're delaying, you know what that means? Watch this. I'm, I'm smart here. My, I'm so smart. I'm telling you something. You're going to say, my pastor is the smartest pastor in the world. See, when you are delaying, you can't be doing the courting. <laughs> 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 
Now you got to admit, that's smart right there. Truth of the matter is, all of you know that. But we don't want to admit that. God, uh, you are my authority. And God says, but you're not doing according. Why? Because we're delaying. You can't be delaying and letting God be the authority and be doing it according. Man, I wish I, I, wish, I, wish I didn't know this stuff. Because I could, I, could, I could right now be saying, well, God, I don't know. God says, no, 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 you know. Watch this now. He's the authority. Are you still with me, Brother Mike, back there? He's the authority in my life, but I'm doing according to what he says. So here's what God says. That means, all right now, you can't be doing that if you're doing delaying or doing something different. What? Yeah, nope. If you're doing something different, there you don't uh, no, no. put the brakes on that. You know what God is saying? Wait a minute, you want to see me do something. And God says, I'm waiting for you to do something. What's that? Stop the land and stop doing something different. If you diminish what God says, okay, we'll do this, but we won't do that. And we'll do God said, you can't, I'm not the authority. You're not doing according. Are we getting this down? I told you I was smart. Hey, Amen. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you something. Here's what God, are you still with me now? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my, Psalm 119, verse 105. Are we still okay? Remember, God's word is going to be there to govern me. He's going to guide me. And by the way, if you'll let him, he'll guard you. I don't know how that happened, God says, because you got out from underneath the protection. Well, I know you want to do your own thing. Here's, let me tell you how God works. Are you still with me? If he's the authority and we're supposed to do according, here's what God says. It's not supposed to be done according to whatever itch you get, whatever floats your boat, whatever fits your preference. You're not supposed to deliberate, debate, or discuss it. You do it according to the authority. Amen. Well, that's all some of us do. Well, you know what? That just don't fit me right. And the God says, stop scratching. Amen. Because our biggest problem today is this. God's just saying, we want God to do something. We're not living by his word. That's right here. Come on now. I'm not making this up. They even had worship based upon how David had told them to do it according to the word of God. There's a lot of people having worship and God is saying, what in the world is that? And when I say worship, I mean worship services. And God is saying, what in the world is that? Matter of fact, I think God sometimes said, that's out of this world. <laughs> Are we okay? So I need to labor in the work. I need to live by the word. Again, the work, the, the, get, the building begin. The next thing, number three, is the lifting up of the worship of God. The lifting up of the worship of God. Let me tell you one of the reasons why churches a preacher like me will preach the word of God or if there's people that teach and I believe around here people are teaching the word of God the reason why that some folks don't want to accept it or want to take it because it's not a worship to God you hear me all the time saying stuff like that I shouldn't say all the time but a lot of time you hear me saying stuff like this say, boy I'm just like Peter depart from me Man, I'm a sinner, just saved by grace. Listen, it wasn't for God, where would I be? Let's just be honest about it. So here's what God says what's missing today, is that when it comes down to real worship, most of the time, it's not about God. Look at verse number 11. Are you still there? Say amen. And they said, and they sang together by chorus and praising and they giving thanks unto the Lord. I like that. They sang together. I like that. They sang. Miss Danny will get it in a minute. They sang. Amen. They weren't singing. They were singing. Come on now. <laughs> I know I got to mess with I love the Bible. Come on, somebody. And how did they sing? They sang together by chorus and praising and giving thanks unto the Lord. In other words, there was full participation. Yeah. <laughs> Here's what God says. There's a lot of people 
come to church and they say, I didn't get anything. God said, because you didn't participate. Yeah. That's right. Amen. It's got to be that participation. Yeah. If it ain't that participation, let me just kind of show you how they did. The couple, th- are you still with me? Say amen. So they gave gratitude to God and they began to glorify God. They gave gratitude when it came to the song, and they began to glorify him. Look at verse 11, with the shout. And all the people shouted with a great shout. What? Yes, all the folks, all the folks got, got to shouting with a great shout. There was, there was everybody involved, and there was fervency in the shouting. Come on, somebody. And I, here are some people say, they too loud. God said, that's what I like. A great shout. You say, preacher, it don't have to be loud. Guess what? When everybody's doing it, it's going to rumble up to heaven. Amen. Okay. <laughs> I know some of you don't like this old preacher, but here's how it went. Are you still with me now? Notice what this They sang together by what? Course in praising and giving thanks. And notice what it says here. And then what they said, there's thanks unto God. Because he is good for his mercy endured forever. What they had was the ones who were calling out about the greatness of God. And the responders were talking about the goodness of God. Do it for, are you still with me? Say amen. amen. Do it for me this way. Go to Psalm 136, if you would, please. The 136th Psalm. And you will see how this thing worked. In other words, the preacher stood up and he said something like this. Oh, give thanks unto to the Lord for he is good and then the, the respondent said for his mercy endure it forever. The preacher would say oh give thanks unto the gods of gods and the church would say for his mercy endure it forever. Oh give thanks to the Lord of hosts why? For his mercy endure it forever. To him who alone doeth great wonder for his mercy endure it. You say preacher that's a whole lot. Well how about this here? Oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Amen! Oh, give thanks to the God of God for his, his mercy and do it forever. Amen. That's how it's supposed to be. Amen. I ain't making it up. It's right there. God said, how about a little shout? Wait a minute. Not a little shout. A great shout. Because <laughs> his mercy. <laughs> now you're getting it. If you read the 136th Psalm, they were having the one called out and then the response came because of the creation of God, what he had done. That's verses 1 through 4. In verses 5 through 9, they talked about the great control God had over everything. In verses 10 through 20, they were talking about how God co- combated and fought for them. He Look at verse number 10. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn. Verse 11, and brought out Israel from among them. In verse 12, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. Verse 13, to him which divided the Red Sea and to part. You can say it right there. Amen. You know what God says? That's how you're supposed to have church. <laughs> Amen. And then the last part. Oh, I like it. They talked about his compassion. He gave land for inheritance. Verse 22, even inheritance on Israel, his servant. Verse 23, who remembered us in our lowest state. Verse 24, and have redeemed us from our enemies. Boy, I'm telling you what, if you can't get happy over what God did for you, how he picked you up, how he set you on a rock, how he established your going, how he put a new song in your mouth, somebody ought to say, Amen. praise God. That's church right there. Now I know somebody's going to come here and say, what got into them? What they've been drinking? Look, look here. Let's see what's in the Kool-Aid. <laughs> we ain't drinking Kool-Aid. No, we're just getting a hold of the word of God. Yeah. And we're being thankful for what the word of God is doing in our lives and how God is changing our lives. Can I ask you a question? Are you working on the building? The labor? Are we really working on it? Or are we just kind of showing up and going through the motions? Are we living by the book? Is he the real final authority? And we do things according to the word? Lamp to my feet, light to my... Yeah. Guards me, guides me, governs me. Yeah. God said, that's what I want to do for you. But you got to take and live by the word. And then how about this here again? How about saying, dear God, when I come to church, it's all about you. 
Point number three, if I didn't give you, we're supposed to be lifting. <laughs> when you come here, if you're going to build a building, you don't lift up you, you lift up him. Amen. That's how I know a building project even is not about the building. It's about having a place where we can come do labor, where we can live, where we can lift him up. So if we don't get a bigger building, matter of fact, come back next week. Can't we do it in a small one? <laughs> yeah, God is saying, you know what? Some people look at it and start saying, oh, don't get ahead of yourself, preacher. I know you're excited about it. But some people look at it and start saying, well, yeah, that's a pretty small congregation. And God says, but that's a congregation that's leaning toward me. Living for me, loving on me, and I like that place more than your three thousand seat auditorium, where you come in there and everybody's saying, "Look at what us got," and God says, "You know what you got? Everything you want except for me, because behold, I stand at the but come back. <laughs> this is not the final word on this." Because God is saying, I need you to decide to do something for me. I need you to be the church. No matter how big you get, or maybe even how small you think you are. If you'll still be what I want you to be, you'll be all right with me. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for just helping us, teaching us a great truth.